In this video, we're going to take a look at the Model Mania Design Challenge from SolidWorks World 2001. If you're unfamiliar with Model Mania, it's a design challenge held every year at SolidWorks World where you're given a drawing similar to this, and your goal is to create this part inside of SolidWorks both as quickly and as accurately as possible. The real challenge, however, is, is once you're done with that, you'll be given a change such as this, which you'll have to make. You don't know what the change is going to be until you're done with the first part, though. So that creates a little bit of a challenge uh, in having foresight into the design intent. Let's go back to the original drawing. Now, I want to point out a few things. The first thing is, unfortunately, a dimension was missing from the drawing. The width of the rib going down the middle of the part should have been listed as 12 millimeters. Secondly, the counterbore called out here really should have specified that it was a counterbore for a socket head cap screw, though you could have used any counterbore you wanted to in that case. So when we take a look at this, the next thing we want to do is look at how we're going to approach modeling this. Keep in mind that this drawing was created in SolidWorks 2000 for SolidWorks World 2001. So the tools that are available today might not have been, a, been available back then. So you can really approach this an infinite number of ways. And the way I'm going to show is just one of those ways. So the key characteristics we want to look at here are going to be, there, there's one really tricky part to this design. It's the 64 millimeter and 146 millimeter that are defining the location of this boss on, uh, out, on the outside of this part here. Those are probably going to be the hardest thing to capture. So let's go ahead and dive into SolidWorks and get started. I'm actually going to start with the mounting plate on the back. This is one of the easiest pieces to go about creating. Now I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to specify that this is 64 by 96 millimeters. Now I used a rectangle with center line so it makes it really easy to snap the middle of this to the origin. Though keep in mind you could have just selected these two entities and chosen midpoint if you're not using SolidWorks 2015. Uh, the reason we do that is so that once this feature is created, our right plane falls right down the middle of the part. And we're going to use that for drawing pretty much the rest of this part. So let's go ahead and get started. I looked at this and there are a, a variety of ways we really could have defined this. And I'm going to approach this one way. You could have approached it many different ways. I'm going to start by drawing this line coming out and this line up at the angle. I'm going to go ahead and take the time to put the 15 millimeter uh, radius down here in the bottom. And now what we really want to do is we want to capture that angle that's coming out of there. I'm going to do this using a construction line or a center line coming out right here. That, that is really going to represent the center of the boss, which we're going to be focusing on here in a minute. I want to capture this angle of 45 degrees. Uh, the next thing I want to do is we want to locate where the bottom of this is going to be. Now there's several ways you could have done this. Uh, you could dimension this center line. You can draw the geometry here. We'll take a look kind of at both of these here. I'm going to start by locating this point using those dimensions we're given on the drawing. 146 and 64 millimeters. Now the sketch is still underdefined and that's this distance. The method I'm using here does require a little bit of math. And the bottom to the top here in this case is going to be, if we look at the drawing, it's going to be 32 plus 12. And we can just type that in to that box there. Now what about this length? That's really defined by the diameter shown in section AA, the 64 millimeters. And we can capture this by dimensioning from the end point to the center line. And when we cross that center line, we can define this as a diameter value, 64 millimeters. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take this sketch and we're going to use a thin feature extrusion. I'm going to set this to midplane, and again, we want to capture that diameter in section AA, 64 millimeters. The thickness of this rib is given to us as 12, and we want to reverse that direction and go ahead and hit OK. So how do we get that arc? Well, this is a great place to use the full round fillet inside of SolidWorks. All I'm going to do is use select other to grab the far face and I'm going to toggle through these faces pretty quickly here. And we've got that shape that we're looking for there now. Now here's where the center line that we created really comes into play. I'm going to turn that sketch on and you'll notice I can go about drawing this circle on this bottom face right here 
And we're going to define this in this case as 52 millimeters. And when I extrude this for the depth, I'm just going to pick the endpoint of that construction line. So that's one way you could have gone about doing this. I'm going to undo pretty much all of that which I just created. And we're going to go back to this sketch and take a look at another way you could have done this. The, one of the other ways you could have done this, actually I wanted to keep that dimension in here. I un, undid a little bit too far. We want that to be 64. We could have offset all this geometry, the 12 millimeters in this case, and chosen select chain and reverse and flip that to the other side. So now we have this 12 millimeter value. Now in this case we do want to close off the ends. And what we're doing here is we're going to eliminate the need for this 44 millimeter dimension and we're going to define this the way this actually should be called out. We're going to change this from a construction line to a solid line in this case. But notice what it's done. It's, it's changed this back. Actually, let's go ahead and throw a center line back in there. The real value of the center line is, is the ability to define these diameter dimensions like so. And so we're missing, oh, the distance down to the bottom. So how do we capture that? Let's actually go ahead and finish this up by closing this off. Now here's where things get really interesting. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to overlap my profiles. That's going to be okay. We're going to use selected contours anyway. And we'll make that 32. And we need the diameter here in this case of 52 millimeters. So now what we have is instead of thin geometry, we have pretty much everything in this one sketch right here. So let's look at how we'll approach this now. This time what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start with a revolve feature. And let's go ahead and choose revolve. And you'll notice I can just pick the regions I want to use and we're going to deselect this thin feature and I'm going to instead of doing a 360 I'm going to do a mid plane 180 degrees right there then what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to reuse that same sketch and I'm gonna go ahead and choose to do an extrusion this time using this region and for the direction I'm gonna to choose to go up to vertex and I'm gonna choose the endpoint here and we're going to do that for the second direction as well and I'm gonna choose up to there and you'll notice again, I'm going to reuse that same sketch again. We're going to do one more revolved feature. This time we're going to select that region. So you can see two very different approaches to tackle the same design problem, whatever method you prefer to use. The second method required more geometry, but no math. The first way required us to uh, uh, figure out a couple of the dimensions. So. Let's go ahead and now let's look at the rib that kind of goes down the middle of this part. Again, I'm going to do this on the right plane here. And this is basically an offset from this inside geometry. Oop, not spline. Let's choose offset. 26 millimeters. And we're going to choose the edge here and the arc here and reverse those out to the outside. Now you'll notice when I go ahead and I create a tangent arc off from this, it fully defines it, but there's a dimension of 55 millimeters that's been given for this arc right here. And in fact, if I try to put this, it says, this will overdefine the sketch. Do you want to leave it driven or driving? And the reason is, is this line, because of the way we offset it, is initially meant to be vertically up and down. I'm gonna go ahead and say, make this dimension driving. And notice, all I have to do is nudge this a little bit, Actually, let's do it the other way. Let's break this first and then throw the dimension on. And that takes care of it there. So we've got that profile. What we're going to do in this case is use the rib feature. And here's that dimension that was missing, the 12 millimeters. And for the direction of the rib, we're just going to flip that arrow to the inside and press OK. There's now the need to apply some fillets to this. Actually, well, there's a hole that could go in here first. Let's do that while we're at this point. Let's drop this hole on that's going to have a diameter of 32 millimeters and we're just simply going to cut that through the entire part. Now the fillets in this um, are a little unique in that uh, sometimes it's good to have foresight. I'm going to actually create these in a way where some of the fillets might not solve later on. So keep that in mind. But I want to show you a fast way to add fillets by selecting geomet unique geometry such as faces. A lot of people default to grab edges and edges are great 
uh, they get you what you're looking for, but notice how many times I have to select here to get exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to deselect those edges in this case and instead choose this face. And that's going to get me the bulk of the fillets. Now I know that if I select this, it's not going to solve because of how that terminates. That's fine. We just need to do that as a second fillet feature here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this edge again. And now we get the fillet solving kind of the way we want up and around that corner. Those actually do look like they're the wrong uh, radius. They're supposed to be two. So I'm just going to click on those values and change those. Let's do this one more time here. Let's grab the value and change that to two. So we have that. The last thing we need are the counter bores. So I'm going to go ahead and select this face and grab my hole wizard tool. Now I have a counter bore for a socket head cap screw already defined. Let's go right into creating the positions. And I'm going to look at this part. Now I'm going to drop the first point and we want to dimension this symmetric about the center line. So a great way to do this is again use a center line tool and then simply select all this geometry and choose mirror entities. What that does is it ensures that both points are always the same distance from the center. That way when I dimension from one to one and add the 60 millimeter dimension, I actually don't need that defining dimension from the outside. Finally, let's go ahead and add the dimension off from the bottom of 32 millimeters and confirm that. So we've got our part done. We looked at two possible ways of creating the geometry. Now we're presented with the change. So when we look at the phase two drawing, unfortunately in SolidWorks World 2001, uh, they didn't give just the change dimensions. They gave us all of those. So this presents a bit of a challenge. We kind of really got to go through and double check our work in all these cases. So let's start with the beginning. We're going to simply click on this feature and ensure that 96, 64, and 20 are in fact the values that are still used on the drawing, and they are. The next thing is where things start to change. We see a couple dimensions have changed. This angle has changed from 45 degrees to 55 degrees. And you can see that that's kind of changed the projection here. Now here's where things get interesting. When we change the 64 to 45, watch what happens to the fillets down here. Because the face we selected is no longer there, that flat face, and here I'll show you, we'll go back, we'll change that back to 64. You can see that this flat face disappears when we reduce the size of this. So that's where I was mentioning faces are a great way, but it might present some challenges later on down the road. That's okay. We're going to go ahead and fix that by editing this feature. The face is missing. That's okay. We're going to select a new face here in this case. And we're going to go ahead and select these edges here in here. Now I want to point something out when I do this as well. Sometimes you don't get the fillet that you're looking for right in a corner right there. And that's because I did create these all at once. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to deselect these two edges that I added to this. And we're simply going to add those as an additional fillet in this case. And notice how we get a much nicer blend in there. Sometimes the order of fillets can really give you different results. And I highly check out uh, recommend checking out Fillet Expert to look at different ways you can solve that. Now, one of the last things we need to do here, okay, let's make sure that these distances are all good. They all look right. Um, this rib has changed substantially. When we go in here and look at this sketch, instead of being this tangent arc that goes into another arc, there's now a flat on here. So, what we're going to do in this case is we're simply going to remove some of this geometry. What I'm going to do to make this simple is I'm going to come tangent off from here and I'm going to draw this line. And watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and just trim all this geometry. And we can use power trim to do this pretty quickly. But look at this in this case. This arc is still tangent to this arc. I'm going to remove that. And instead, I want it to be tangent to this line. An easy way to do this in 2015 is to select this vertice and just make that tangent like so. Now when I close the sketch, everything updates the way we want it. So there you have it, the Model Mania Design Challenge from SolidWorks World 2001. We looked at multiple approaches to tackle this to point out the fact that any design challenge can be approached in a variety of different ways.